Hello friends, as you might be aware, we have started two new sections on our YouTube channel. Uh, the graph related discussions and the clinical case based MCQ discussions. Apart from that, we have started uh, various new uh, aspects like uh, daily MCQ upload on the community post and so on and so forth. So uh, to get the notifications of all of these, why not subscribe to the channel? Now that being said, let's start with the today's graph. It's a very, very, very important graph. Academically speaking, uh, conceptually speaking, clinically speaking. The graph is that of left ventricular pressure volume changes during a cardiac cycle, popularly called as LVPV loop, left ventricular pressure volume loop. It's important because uh, various university exams ask this for a, as a long question at the first in MBBS level. Uh, later on in the postgraduate medicine, you will require lots of variations in this graph. So uh, it's a very important graph. In fact, we might have to create another playlist for the graph and its deviations. Now let's begin. Uh, first thing, why left ventricle only? Well, uh, the answer is simple. It is the left ventricle which is a real workhorse. It is the left ventricle which generates the pressure wave which is transmitted along the vascular tree. And it's the left ventricle which, which ejects the blood volume, which then circulates throughout the body and is termed as the cardiac output, reaching every part of the body, every cell, in fact. And therefore, we are interested in the uh, pressure volume changes in the left ventricle. Before we start with the graph, two basic aspects. One, uh, systole and diastole happening alternately in the left ventricle. Uh, systole means the pressure inside the ventricle increases, the, uh, the chamber is contracting, so pressure rises and then the blood is ejected out, so the volume will fall, volume will decrease because the blood volume is ejected out during systole. Then the diastole happens, diastole means the ventricle uh, relaxes, expands and accommodates the blood. So pressure inside the chamber will fall and since it receives the blood, the volume will increase. So uh, that is happening alternately in the left ventricle. And the second basic point is that there are two valves in front of the left ventricle, mitral valve and aortic valve. So you can see here, as the left ventricle goes in diastole, the mitral valve will open and the blood will be received from the left atrium. And then diastole ends, systole starts. Now aortic valve is yet to open, mitral valve got closed but aortic valve has not yet opened. That will be isovolumic contraction. Eventually aortic valve will open and the blood will be ejected into the aorta. That will be systolic ejection and then the aortic valve will close. So we, our discussion will revolve around these two valves. Now that being said, let us actually discuss the graph. First things first, uh, what is represented on the horizontal and vertical axis? Horizontal axis shows left ventricular volume. So 50 ml, 100 ml, 130 ml. And on the vertical axis, there is left ventricular pressure. So 50 mm of Hg, 100 mm of Hg, 130 mm of Hg. To keep it simple, we have taken these figures 50, 100, 130, 50, 100, 130. All right. Let's start. Uh, basically, we will show uh, four changes during a cardiac cycle. So four uh, phases. You have to follow the arrow and you will know what phase is that. So you can see here phase number one going from point A to point B. What is happening here? As you can see, the ventricular blood volume is going from 50 to 130 ml, which means what? Which means left ventricle is receiving the blood. And therefore, this is a phase of diastole. And to be precise, it is a phase of filling. So phase number one, it's the phase of filling, left ventricular filling. How does that happen? So at point A, the mitral valve opens. Obviously, as the mitral valve opens, 
the left ventricular filling will begin and at point B the filling ends mitral valve is closed point B is called as end diastolic volume volume of blood in the ventricle by the end of the diastole so end diastolic volume uh, it's about 125 to 130 ml so uh, that's the summary of phase one well again remember if it's a question in your exam write down the phase uh, talk about the pressure change talk about the volume change in that particular phase we talked about the volume going from 50 to 130 ml what about the pressure please note that this is a straight arrow flat arrow horizontal arrow the arrow is not going up like that it's not going up on the vertical axis it's not going up on the pressure axis that means pressure is not rising in the left ventricle during this phase it means what it means left ventricle is relaxing and accommodating the blood without allowing the pressure to rise so pressure is not rising it's almost the same during that phase all right so you write the phase you write what happens to the pressure what happens to the volume next phase number two a straight arrow from point b to point c a straight arrow going up vertically the arrow is vertically going up like this means what now the volume 130 ml it remains the same throughout the phase but on the vertical axis the pressure is rising so same volume pressure is rising means isovolumic contraction all right so phase number two is isovolumic contraction isovolumic contraction all right volume remains the same and pressure is rising for every phase you got to write what happens to the pressure what happens to the volume so in this case pressure rises but volume has remained the same and why it is isovolumic why the volume has remained the same because mitral valve has got closed but aortic valve has not yet opened so this is a phase of systole yes but ejection has not yet started because aortic valve is still closed right now uh, at point c the next phase will start at point c the aortic valve will open let's write it here aortic valve opens so that means now the ejection will start the left ventricular ejection will start phase number three you can see that the arrow is coming back from 130 ml on the horizontal axis it's 130 ml back to 50 ml the arrow is coming back that means now the volume is decreasing volume is decreasing because left ventricular ejection is starting ejection is happening aortic valve has opened at this point and the ejection will happen so you can see volume has decreased because the blood is ejected out of the left ventricle so its volume decreases what what about the pressure you can look at the uh, pressure it has gone up for most of the phase the pressure has increased on the vertical axis it has gone up just the last part it shows slight dip now wh uh, what type of contraction is this this is oxotonic contraction uh, oxotonic contraction means as the contraction proceeds strength of contraction goes on increasing that's called as oxotonic contraction uh, left ventricular systole is generally called as the oxotonic contraction uh, as the ventricle contracts its pressure goes on increasing but as it ejects the blood out aorta starts filling with blood and therefore the later part of the contraction meets with a lot of resistance outflow resistance so only last part shows some dip in the pressure all right anyways that's phase number three uh, phase of ejection what happens to the volume volume decreases and uh, the pressure 
for most part the pressure has increased just the last part has shown some dip all right that's point d where the the phase has ended point d ejection ended because now here the aortic valve closes aortic valve closed that means there is no more ejection possible now now the ventricle will go in diastole but aortic valve has got closed now for diastole and receiving the blood mitral valve has to open that has not ha happened yet so aortic valve closed and mitral valve is also closed it has not yet opened and the just the ventricular pressure is falling and therefore you can see just a straight arrow coming down that means volume remains the same ventricle is not receiving any blood volume remains the same only on the vertical axis the pressure is falling pressure is decreasing so same volume and pressure is falling that means isovolumic relaxation yes so phase number four is isovolumic relaxation what happens to the pressure pressure falls pressure decreases because this is diastole so pressure is falling what happens to the volume nothing happens to the volume volume remains the same because mitral valve has not yet opened phase number four isovolumic relaxation and then at point a again the mitral valve will open and the phase of eject uh, phase of uh, filling ventricle left ventricular filling will happen so this is the uh, these are the left ventricular pressure volume changes uh, during a cardiac cycle now a few add-ons few important aspects we have already talked about one that is at point b it's called as end diastolic volume very important aspect we will talk about preload after load etc in some other video but right now please remember end diastolic volume is 125 to 130 ml and uh, uh, it's uh, it indicates the preload on the left ventricle volume of blood in the ventricle by the end of the diastole means uh, at the start of next systole so that's the preload before the systole starts there is load on the left ventricle anyways so this is end diastolic volume and then ejection has happened from c to d that is in the phase three ejection has happened and that systolic ejection has ended here so this point or point a also can be called as end systolic volume look systolic ejection happening in phase three it ended here and then phase four volume has remained the same volume does not change therefore you can even say this point volume at this point point a or point d same volume it's called as end systolic volume end systolic volume is the volume of left ventricle by the end of the systolic ejection in this graph it is about 50 ml so 50 ml is the end systolic volume let's write it here end systolic volume uh, 50 ml and now two most important aspects what is the stroke volume in this graph look by the end of the filling 130 ml was filled in the left ventricle okay and then the blood was ejected out from 130 ml some amount of blood was ejected and at the end of ejection 50 ml was left behind so from 130 how much was ejected so that 50 left behind 80 ml yes so by this graph the stroke volume is 80 ml that is how you can calculate from 130 minus 50 and therefore width of the loop width of the loop indicates stroke volume and it is 80 ml second point what uh, is reflected by the height of this loop height now on the vertical axis height on the vertical axis it represents left ventricular pressure 
बट बाय इंप्लीकेशन लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकुलर प्रेशर इज रिफ्लेक्टिव ऑफ द आफ्टर लोड ऑन द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल एटा प्रेशर इज द आफ्टर लोड ऑन द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल लोड ऑन द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल आफ्टर इट्स कॉन्ट्रेक्शन स्टार्ट सो दैट इज एटा प्रेशर मोर द एटा प्रेशर greater will have to be left ventricular pressure to overcome the aorta pressure and that means the height again i just repeat in simple words height means on the vertical axis it's the left ventricular pressure and left ventricular pressure by implication it reflects the after load on the left ventricle more the after load more the aorta pressure greater will be the height of this loop greater will be the lv pressure all right so uh, these two are the important aspects width and the height uh, of this loop so for the basic understanding of the cardiac cycle events this much was enough for this video in the subsequent videos we will be describing the changes that happen in this the uh, mechanical event of the cardiac cycle and then Uh, later on we will also discuss the disease conditions that affect this uh, these mechanical events